Hello, and welcome back to my demo of the Nexus Repository Manager. In the last video, I installed Nexus and got it up and running locally. And as we can see here, it's still running in my local host. And in this video, what I would like to do is an overview of the application, just to get a sense of what's included. And then in the next video, we'll actually walk through a use case um, and a demo of the product itself. Okay, so let's start with the top nav bar. Uh, if we start in the top right, I could see this is where I would sign out. Uh, this, where it says admin here, this is actually my username. If I click this, it's basically I have the option to uh, adjust my name and my email. Here is also where I could uh, set my NuGet API key. So if you're using Nexus to access NuGet packages, you could also authenticate with this API key here. This question mark has really helpful links to uh, their documentation, their knowledge base, um, the community, as well as an issue tracker. And then here we see uh, this is sort of a system status check. So you can see, is the system up and running? Are there any issues? And then if you set up any policies, are there any uh, violations of those policies at the moment? Here we can use uh, search and you can um, use their custom search program um, language. So you can search for an exact match or you can use wildcards. Okay, that's kind of an overview of the sort of the how to navigate. There are two really important sections of the application. The first one is this server administration and configuration. This is where we're going to do things like configure object storage, uh, expiration policies, connect to uh, different repositories, and set up different uh, search uh, search for, I would search queries that you can be used for other people within the application. And then on the browse section, this is where you would actually find, look for and search for any, any components or packages within the application. So you can click to browse and then I could search, select any specific repository to, to view any packages that are included there. So in repository, let's dive into some of these, uh, or sorry, in the, uh, this admin section, let's dive into these five different configurations. So for blob stores, this is really, this is how storage is handled for Nexus. For me, I'm running this locally, so I'm fine using their default option, which basically uh, is using my hard drive. I'm currently using less than 10 megs, um, and I could see that I can also enable quotas uh, that will limit how much storage is actually used. So you could set up a quota that will say, okay, limit the number, the amount of space used to a specific number of megabytes. So I'll just set this policy to 1000 megs and uh, I'm actually not gonna, look, okay. Uh, I see. So updating the, the configuration will make it temporary un temporarily unavailable. So I'm going to avoid setting uh, any changes to the blob store here, but this is where you would do that. Um, in addition, you could also create one and you have the option, of course, to for it to be a file or you can connect to S3 here as well. And then you just put in the path of the store you're connecting to. Okay. The cleanup policies is a really useful feature. Uh, this is where you can manage component removal uh, up policies. So for instance, I created one here that's called image cleanup. And let's add a note here that says, clean up or remove any images that are old and not useful. So the criteria here is to clean up any images that were removed or components that are more than 30 days old and match the name dev. This is a really nifty feature. You can say to publish before or last downloaded before, and you can also use regular expression to match the component names. You also have the option to preview results and then of course save, save it. So I'm gonna discard my changes there. You could create a new cleanup policy and it's 
uh, basically the same thing that we just went through, so I'm not going to go through it now. Um, let's go back here and see what's next. So next we have our repositories. So let's look, take a look at this table. Um, one, we have the option to create here. You can also search and, and filter based on name. But what we see here, let's look at the Maven examples. We see a few different Maven repositories, one called Central, Proxy, Public, Releases, and Snapshots. And then for types, we see Proxy, Group, and Hosted. So what Nexus does is the, a hosted repository is one that's hosted locally as part of your Nexus application. So this would be a private repository that you and your team have access to. They also give you the option to proxy other repositories. This could be something like Maven Central or any really any, any repository that you want to proxy and mirror and make available. The reason that you would proxy these requests or these repositories is so that you can uh, give people a single endpoint for accessing all of your packages without having to worry about managing um, that logic in every developer's uh, settings file. Um, so we see here, then there's this third option, which is group. A group is a, is a combination of hosted and proxied repositories. So I could see here that this group includes Maven releases, Maven snapshots, and Maven central. What this means is that when I access, when I try and pull a package from, from Nexus, it will first look for the item in Maven releases. If it's not there, then it will try and find it in snapshots. And then if it's not there, finally, it'll look in the public Maven repository, Maven central. And now you can set an arbitrary number of uh, repositories to this and maintain the logic. If you were trying to do this without a repository manager, you would have to have each developer maintain a very specific settings.xml file with that uh, repository order in place. And the reason that applications like Nexus exist is because that's difficult to do, especially when you have large teams. Okay, let's go back to the repositories. You can also, when you're here, you could see, uh, you could filter on format, uh, status. You can very quickly copy the URL. So if you're trying to just copy that, you can easily share it. And then they have some uh, security features here as well. So you can analyze your repositories and then you can see if there are any violations if you have Nexus IQ. Uh, Nexus IQ it allows you to set up rules and policies for preventing any malicious software from making its way into your uh, into your software. Okay, then we have routing rules. So routing rules are ways of setting up access and permissions to different repositories. So you can create a routing rule um, based on really any criteria and set up tests. It's a pretty cool way of setting up um, pol uh, security protocols. And then they have something here called content selectors. And what this is, is really is a way of searching for um, specific components within Nexus. Uh, Nexus gives you the option of using something that they call CSEL, which is uh, their version of, uh, I don't want to call it SQL, but it's their way of searching for packages within Nexus. Uh, and they, they have documentation for um, what this looks like, but they give us an example here. So in this example, I could search for all uh, Maven 2 content along a path that starts with a given um, domain name or given URL. So here I put format equals equals. If I wanted to do um, matches instead of equals, I could do something like equals um, tilde, and then that would search for just matches. Um, so this is pretty cool. You could set up a bunch of different uh, search queries and you could save them and then that, that could be used by your team to be able to say, okay, show me all the latest um, Maven packages or, or whatever I'm looking for. Okay, and then that's, that's it for the admin and configuration section. The final piece that I would like to show is the browse section. So this is where you would actually um, look for any of the packages on your system. So for instance, I could take a look at uh, Maven public, and in this case, I have 
haven't gone through and set everything up yet, so no components are here. But this is when I actually do do my uh, search. I can find any of my components here, and it will have uh, details about them. So for that piece, um, stay tuned for the next portion of the video in which we will um, go through the remainder of the application. We will set up an, a remote NPM uh, proc Google proxy, the public NPM registry. Then we'll set up a private hosted NPM registry, and then we'll group them together and, and define an ordered logic that makes sense for our use case. So stay tuned for that next video, and uh, I'll look forward to sharing.